Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. I started using uh, sounds for hacking my brain in the very, geez, in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, I guess, a long time ago now. <laughs> and you know, there were a couple companies who, who did that. There was uh, the Monroe Institute, uh, which is the preeminent one who did the, a lot of the work. And then um, probably even more successful was Centerpoint. Uh, with uh, with Bill Harris, who passed away. He's been on the show. He was a dear friend. I dedicated one of my books to him. So th these were two of the pioneers in the very first generation of sound therapy. So mm -hmm. I learned about binaural beats and actually made my own. I'm like, I should be able to do this. So I got to, mm -hmm. like, now I'm dating myself again. Sometime in, like, Windows 4 or something, Windows 98, uh, some sort of an app that it was a video game uh, sound effects thing. I'm like, yeah. oh, I could do this. Yeah. So I'd, you know, make my little binaural beats and I'd, I'd actually go use my own files to hack my brain, uh, but it didn't work as well as all these <laughs> other things that were done by people who knew a lot more than I did. And what I learned about is um, kind of two technologies I want to explain that I want you to go into what you're doing. <clears throat> uh, the original sound entrainment is called drumming. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. monaural beats. <laughs> yes, it's one. Yeah. And so, but it's true if you beat at a certain thing. And I've done work with a, a Siberian lineage shaman who. You know, pulled out his drum and beat at a certain frequency, and then within 20 seconds, maybe of doing that, he just literally dropped to the floor. Like like that frequency leaves his body, hits the floor, starts snoring, and goes to the underworld and does the shamanic stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's the power of one yeah. to a brain who can do that. And then the next one would be Tibetan singing bowls. Like mm -hmm. one bowl on this side, one bowl on this side, and all of a sudden you hear a woo woo woo, and your <laughs> brain does something. Yeah. Right? So these are not yeah. new technologies. Right. But you've taken it a few steps past that. Can you explain yeah. isochronic and phantom and all the stuff sure, you're doing? Sure. So what we're well, what I tell people is we take ancient traditions and make modern technology. So I don't think there's anything new under the sun. People just figure out how to, like we did, we we made it commercially available that people aren't getting it. So I'm, I'm a big believer in shamanistic drumming and things like that. So what we looked at was what's happening. The iso That's like more like an isochronic tone. So if we look at the Earth, for instance. Mm -hmm. If you and I were on a spaceship moving toward Earth, the Earth would have a frequency between 0 0.01 and 100. Some people say up to 400 because they've had brain brain states up to 400. When you say the Earth frequency, you're, you're talking about like I'm human just saying, or? I'm, I'm talking about the, we're by a volcano would be about 100. What would the, be the hertz frequency? Hertz so frequency we could, of what? We could, the planet right like, there. Like, if you're standing there, like you. But standing, is that a magnetic or an electrical? It's like, electrical, electro, okay. electromagnetic. Electromagnetic. So, so Got it. the planet has a frequency. Yeah. So everything is frequency, right? Okay. This table has a frequency. This mic has a frequency. So when, when we're, so when we're, let's say we're standing in a. When you're talking about the cave, mm -hmm. for instance, we're inside the cave. That's 7.8 hertz frequency because the mountaintop, that's what most people call the Earth frequency, right? That's theta. So our brain actually is always syncing to its environment. That's why if it's chaotic, in your case mm -hmm. with all the sounds, that's causing some disruption. So you have to filter it out. You have to learn how to do that. Most people just do that normally. They tune out, right? But it, our brain's always engaged. So if we're by the ocean, it's 10 hertz frequency. So we're looking at that. How does that happen? So if we put on earphones and eyeglasses, we're actually filtering out the reality that we're in. We're creating another reality, which is our internal reality. And so we can't have both. We are either, that's why when you're in, in class and you daydream, you don't hear the teacher. You're, you're, you're basically playing ball in the yard instead of listening to the teacher. So we're gonna take them away from this external world and we're gonna put them into a synthetic world where we're gonna stimulate them with sound. So we live in a synchronizing universe. All people have to do is go to YouTube and put in synchronizing metronomes. There's a mm -hmm. guy who starts 200 metronomes and they sync. So our brain wants to be in sync. Our body wants to be in harmony. In, but other things drag it out of there. So we use a sound. So binaural beats, in general, we're gonna put a frequency in one ear like the singing bowls. They're gonna have different size singing bowls maybe. Whatever yeah. the difference is, the brain actually makes a phantom sound. That phantom sound, what we found out in the 80s, and it was actually not till 92 when they had the neuro uh, techniques or the neuro equipment that we could actually measure what was happening. Because yeah, we couldn't measure brain waves <laughs> right. very well before that, no. right? Before that, we were using mostly respiration, heart rate, and things like that, but not HRV even. It was, yeah. it was, it was different than that. It's pretty brutal. In, in the, uh, but <laughs> once we started being able to measure the brain, we could track how the brain changes. We know that every three to five seconds, we need to make a change or an interrupt to the pattern. If not, the brain will go bye-bye. It's, it's like advertising. They know they can only hold your attention for so long. The brain only has so much. So if you have a, let's say you have a fully functioning, both ears work perfectly, isochronic tones can work really well for you. And by the way, 
our first our first program that we did was called the MC Square. We actually licensed the Moreau Institute's uh, binaurals. So you got their sounds because <laughs> yes. they were the most tested yeah. on the planet. Yes. Okay, very cool. In, in, and we, I actually had property in Shipman, Virginia, just three doors down from them. So I, I knew them. And they in, still? I don't think. Yeah, they're, they're still there. Yeah, wow. they're, yeah. It was always my dream in the '90s to do that, and I never did. I ended yeah. up going down, you know, a different path, but. Yeah. They're, what, what they had done, um, and, and guys, this is like the ancient history of brain hacking, right? Um, it was change the sounds based on what your, uh, what your brain waves were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think things have evolved a lot in the last 30 years or, yeah. or 25 years or so, uh, but it was the first group to do something like that. Mm -hmm. And the learning that came out of that was the impact of the sounds on the brain. Mm -hmm. So then you don't have to go anywhere, you get the sounds, and you guys actually license those sounds yeah. in BrainTap mm -hmm. so that you can use those to tune where the brain goes. And then you layer in mm -hmm. the vibration and then the lights even on the, the uh, acupuncture meridians on the ears. So then you're stacking yeah. the lights up yeah. with the binaural beats. So what's happening in the right ear with okay. sound is happening in the left mm -hmm. eye with light. So oh, we're doing binaurals with light. Very that's cool. that's why when your brain doesn't see them, it's because they're in sync. Just like your brain doesn't hear either a sound in the ears. Now, mm -hmm. what we did was we found out it happened to me. I, uh, like you, were traveling a lot. I had uh, my eardrum busted on the yeah. flight, and so I had to get it repaired. And then now I have 20% less hearing there. And I found out that I wasn't tracking to the binaurals. But if I could layer in the isochronic tone that matched it, now my brain could make up that difference. Yeah, it'll so fill it in. So, and both of them work really good separately. But when you stack them, it's like we're giving the brain another piece of information that is healthy. And to give you an example, we did a study in Provo, Utah with, uh, it's an amino acid for the brain. It's an addiction center. Mm -hmm. And they actually were measuring through urine analysis how much nutrients the people were actually uh, using and not using. Wow. And they found 30% more absorption into the body if they were doing brain tap rather than watching their phone while they were getting this IV treatment. Wow. So when the body's in this relaxed state, so if we can get the body into the relaxed state, now the body can do what it does better. And that happened because we were synchronizing the brain. And most of the people in that study used only the earbuds because they didn't know they were photosensitive or whatever was going on.